time to be Inspector North. This is the, okay. the EU nonce edition episode of Inspector North, where we go and find the EU's nonces and uh, inspect, I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. People don't know what I'm talking about. Inspector North was a very good YouTuber, but you know, eh, he, he seems to be uh, deleted from this world. But we'll get back to him later. We'll start off by promoting something on notices.com, this being the Active Measures Book Club, which was um, jolly good fun, and also gives us an insight how to inspect things <laughs> and find out who's, who's uh, responsible for many of the weird, strange things that happen in the world. Anyway, Inspector North over here. This, mm-hmm. this is the profile, in case you're wondering. Clearly a very switched-on bloke. Yeah, indeed he is. In fact, uh, his bit shoot is still up. Inspector <laughs> North over here. So My thumbnail is genius. Yeah, go give him a watch. They're, they're really <laughs> funny, if nothing else, because, I mean, like some of these are just great. Like he, um, uh, What's the best one I'm going to recommend? I think the best one is probably this one, where this guy is traveling from like Bahrain to the UK and then claiming to be a Syrian refugee and he's just obviously not. And it's, it's just comical. Now joined by Tim Lawton. There we are. <laughs> Inspector North over here decides to watch the news and see this whole thing of like, I'm a, I'm a refugee who's fled from Syria. And I was like, yeah, but are you? And then goes and finds out, no, he's, he's from a middle class family and he's, he's literally just a, a media person who lies. In fact, during the COVID crisis as well, this guy decided to pretend to be, I'm an NHS cleaner. I was like, no, you're not. Like, that's just... he's, he's a professional liar then. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think he was working as the, in the NHS as a cleaner, but that was literally just because he couldn't find video work. It's like, no, your main job is being a, a videographer. Like, <laughs> you, you have holidays in Dubai with your family who live there. So, shut up. <laughs> anyway, but Inspector North over here, he uh, seems to have retired. He, he's disappeared. Um, just the bit shoot. So, do go and enjoy the bit shoot. Just a bit of lobbying for him there. No, it's not. It's just a video recommendation because I like him. Anyway, but we're going to be Inspector North today, although I don't have a pipe. really should have brought a prop, but oh well. Well, because we're looking at this. This is Isabel Oakshot posting the last night of the proms, which is a middle-class piss-up where they all stand there and listen to music and, and be middle-class in the al- album. Hey. <laughs> well, it's true, though, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't go to that personally, but you know. If but you remember like- Yes Minister? Of course, yeah. You remember the scene where they're talking about giving money to the, the Albert Hall and the arts? Mm-hmm. And then Humphrey defends it by being like, well, of course I don't go to any of these things. Of course I don't pay for, you know, I don't listen to Radio 4 or whatever. <laughs> but it's nice to know it's there, damn it. And that's why it deserves government money, whereas football clubs don't, is the example given. <laughs> because that's the thing. I mean, yeah, it's art. Cool. Why do you get government money, though? Because middle class people in the civil service like it and get free tickets, that's why. The government shouldn't be involved in any of this stuff. So it's a state-funded event. That's, that's mainly the point I'm trying to make there. And as you can see, British flags from the people actually, you know, organizing the damn thing. And then there's a bunch of EU flags for the section where they're seeing Ooh. Royal Britannia. And it's like, hmm, how did that happen? So, Inspector North, EU non edition shall begin. Because, well, let's go and find out, shall we? Because, well, it, uh, there we are. We're done. This is the boring thing about the social media age. Your, inspe- your uh, investigations don't take very long. You just find them on the on, on Twitter. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's the people responsible. Here's what they did. Literally, it. just said on social media. Yeah. So this is the EU flags team over here. Um, they wrote an open letter, as you can see, to Tim Davy, the uh, director general of the BBC, the man who the Tories put in and said he he'll sort it out. They'll stop being leftists and allowing subversion to happen. I'm sure that worked well. They did nothing. Anyway, they, they write in here. They're, they're thanking Tim. They say, we at EU Flags team have embedded the, la- the traditional last night at the BBC prom celebration with our own slant of EU flag waving. Right. Okay. They then go on to whine about borders, harming the ability of uh, musicians and, and the prom specifically to happen. What? Which doesn't make any kind of sense. They're just like, yeah, we're, we're, this almost didn't happen because of the, the Brexit. One of the um, no? sort of memes in sort of music spheres... Um, which I'm very familiar with, is that there are far more musicians than society will possibly ever need. As in, it's very, very competitive. There are always people willing to um, take up spaces as, say, a session musician or in, you know, in, a, in say, an jockeys. orchestra. Yeah, because everyone wants to do it because it's fulfilling and rewarding. Yeah, but even then, it's, it just doesn't make any sense because they're acting like a Berlin Wall was erected. <laughs> I, I wish. I don't know if anyone knows, but you, yeah, you could just go to Europe or come, or the Europeans can still just come here. It's surprisingly easy, actually. 90 whole days. In fact, <laughs> in fact when I went abroad, there's like an EU line and a Britain-only line 
And the Britain only line is way quicker than the EU line. Yeah. We get priority now. Depending on the country. Yes. Of course. Uh, and how many people are on your flight. Yeah. You know? Well, if you go to like a, a British hotspot, you'll find the, the British line, I think. But mm -hmm. if you go anywhere else, then you, can, you have to stand the international one. Which again, like people have been whining about it Twitter like this is inhumane. And I was like, no. What, just, queuing? Just wait 20 minutes, you freaking <laughs> loser in a queue. Like, this is your favorite thing. Anyway, <laughs> they go on here to say that music has no borders. It's a universal language expressing, as it does, the voice of humanity. I, I want to be sick. Well, um, music does have borders, as, as in, you know, the song starts and ends. That's also it true. carry on forever. <laughs> but it's, it's just... I'm not even going to say poetic language because it's not. It's sickening language is what it is. They got to say, in order to share the best of Britain's cultural beating heart, musicians and artists should not face borders. <laughs> should not face them. Okay, whiny internationalist BS. Mm. We should get special treatment. Why? Because we're artists. <laughs> oh, aren't you middle class and insufferable? Hey, it's not the middle classes. We're not all bad. No, I'm not saying all the middle classes like this, but all the people who are like this are middle class and sufferable twats. Mm -hmm. All upper class. You, yeah, you never hear working class people doing like, oh, well, there should be no borders. I am a special snowflake who should be able to roam the world. It's like, no. It's just, mm -hmm. okay. That's because the working class go into either trades or like retail or something. They're not going, I'm an artist. I'm so special. Those, they don't have delusions of grandeur in the same way. Well, they're working class. Mm -hmm. who's, who's in the name. <laughs> people who don't understand the class system, but yeah, it is just insufferable. I mean, you know what? I'm going to call them Lib Dems instead. I think that's a better compromise. That, they do fit that archetype, don't they? Every Lib Dem is like this. Mm -hmm. Not every middle class person. So there we are. I think that's well, I think it's a better way. Normally, the people that gravitate towards the Lib Dems is, I'm, I'm very sensible. I'm, I'm right in the center of other political parties. Mm, therefore, both I must sides. be right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but on this issue, like one side is saying destroy the country. <laughs> we only partially sides. destroy the country. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I just, I can't, I'm so sick of that, where it's just like, if I'm getting S from both sides, I'm on the good side. And it's like, no. no. Assess both arguments. There might be reasonable points. There might not be reasonable points. That's, that's mm -hmm. how thinking works. So just sitting there being like, both sides. Anyway. So <laughs> these uh, Lib Dems over here, they went on to say that our EU flags represent hope at the last night of the proms, musically celebrating Britannia ruling the airways, hopefully transforming the problematic post-colonial anthems into something more, shall we say, enlightened and collaborative. Okay, you're progressive scum. <laughs> I, I, that's all. I mean, it's expected, but revealed in that sentence. So there's that. So there you are. Some progressive scumbags are the ones. That is there. so condescending. Ugh. Britannia rules the airways when, when post-colonial, blah, blah, blah. Oh, kill, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew get, what you were going to say. Get in trouble if I say my thoughts. Anyway, here's how they fund it. So there we are. Inspector North had it again with a whole link. So this is them, their crowd funder. It's uh, 1.8 grand. There, almost 1.9 grand. This is for this year alone. So there's that. I did a little bit of uh, calculations on Amazon.com just trying to buy EU flags. So 300 flags would have cost me 170 pounds. So 3,141 pounds to give literally everyone in the building, all 5,000 of them, flag, which you don't need to, obviously. I tell you what I would do if I were in government. I would increase tariffs, but only on EU flags. Oh, that's a good idea. Just to wind them up, make them more expensive. Five thousand percent tax. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the um, point being that that's how you fund it. It's not that expensive. It's a pretty cheap gig for them to be able to have maximum impact for the Lib Dem activism. And here you go. Here's them unloading it. There you are. Someone messaged me. I mean, uh, uh, you know, not having a go. I think it's cute. Well, he was like, you know, can you get to the bottom of this? And I was like, what? What do you mean get to the bottom of it? It's pretty public. <laughs> like, anyway, there you are. There's, there's them with their Royal Mail van and piling it up. And uh, while we go on, you can see Steve Bray, the, the guy who is a British meme. Yeah, the, the Brexit man who doesn't have a job and just stands around harassing people on the street with a top hat on. In British politics, there's a man who gets paid by some of the elite to literally just stand around our parliament and shout at them. Stop Brexit like every 30 seconds. It, That's a job. Yeah, the modern times have eliminated the job of village idiots. They've outsourced it to a, a man who yeah. they've just astroturfed in. Yeah. Here you can see he's promoting the crowdfunder. So there you are. That's, mm -hmm. that's where the money comes from. No, no surprise. Um, this person also saying, this is why it's cheap activism for them, because of course they're lunatics who believe this. Just look at, just look at the bio every single time. Anyway. Of course. Do not let anyone make you believe this country is anti-European. The UK has the strongest pro-EU voice in Europe. No. But you don't have to be anti-European 
if you and uh, you know if there's you the obvious the sleight of hand where he's like yeah. the EU and Europeans no not the same I like the continent of, of Europe funnily enough and you like bureaucracy <laughs> damn <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to restructure all of my political beliefs now damn. yeah to, to be pro EU empire anyway point being it, yeah everyone's making that point in the bottom it's just like no we hate the EU not Europeans moron but the <laughs> Uh, point being, it's cheap. They get their voice out. That's why they do this. It's uh, if you live in London and have access to state-funded, well, spectacles, concerts that you can exploit very easily because you live in London and that's the hub of, well, delusions. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy to do this thing. So that's that's why they're able to have such an impact on a small budget, which um, is what it is. And as I said, I mean, most people look at this and are just like, yeah, losers, rule Britannia, go to hell. Not, not going to deal with it. So pretty ineffective, I would say, at actually convincing mm -hmm. anyone. So there's that. But I did want to mention a few more things. But, well, <sighs> these people also can't think, for one. You can see this chap here, Ukraine flag, EU flag. I don't know, what's, what's that, like the Baltic duchies? What I, I'm not entirely sure, actually. <laughs> I want to find out now. <laughs> what, 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 what's he got going on? What is this? Is that gonna, if I do that... Can you search it? Yeah. Copy okay. the flag and paste it in. Paste. Search. Oh, it's Cornish. Oh, it's Corn one. That's not what? a Cornish flag. Why is it so stretched out? Isn't it the wrong colours? The wrong around? No, uh, Cornwall is uh, white and black. Oh, is it? I thought it was black and white. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit pedantic, isn't it? <laughs> no, I mean the other way around. It's not white and black, I, it's black I, and white. I realise how stupid that sounded, but I mean, <laughs> like, I mean the, the colours swapped to what he's got. Is it not? I'm not sure. Am I You've dumb? got me down. I've seen it so many times. I mean, okay, I, I, need, up, I need to know now. I'm, I'm I grew up like too a half hour drive away from Cornwall. Image. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah, that's. Yeah. He's got it wrong. <laughs> is, is he anti Cornwall? It's not enough to be against Cornwall. You've got to be actively anti Cornwall. But either way. Says Lewis Henwood. Just look at the state of this. Like, I'm sorry, but it, you know the, the terminally on my, online meme? The terminally online boomer is my. Ugh, is, is the pit of despair of that meme, in my view? At least the terminally online younger people know roughly what's going on. Sure, but it's not even that. It's, it's the, if you're a terminally online boomer, like, it, it, the MAGA guys are interesting because at least that makes sense. Like, yeah, then you've got the, the guys who support like, uh, progressivism or something. Like, at least there's something interesting going on between both of those camps. But I mean this kind of terminally online boomer where they're obsessed with Westminster politics. Mm-hmm. The it's most over boring, for that, yeah. bland subject on earth when it comes to politics, mm -hmm. where they know bland every by design as well. Yeah, but they'll know every minister's name and their secretaries <laughs> and what little drama has been going on in their offices. It's like socially acceptable celebrity gossip in a sense, isn't it? It's yeah. just like I, I, I'm too too good for you know regular celebrity gossip, so I get my Westminster gossip. Ha ha. All this. Look at this person. Look at this person posting the same thing under other people's posts because that seems like a, a sane thing to do. Yeah, just again. Ah, oh God. Also, Elon Musk was was just worried about Russian retaliation. It's not like he's infatuated with Russia. No, so it's just a misrepresentation. But anyway, these are absolute um, poor souls. Frankly, I don't even want to be mean to him because it's just like, oh man, fuck a woman, do something. <laughs> it's just, can't say that <laughs> I can anyway so he says here you know the, the free speech people are, are complaining about this they're trying to cancel us and it's like no it's a state funded event stop being like this you losers and then well you then have the boomer ex-MPs from the conservative party who are like I'm complaining about this Who cares? <laughs> like, literally, who cares? I'm going to write a complaint, says the ex-Tory MP. Oh, man, imagine if you had done something when you were an MP. Or any of your colleagues had done something when they are MPs now. They won't. Nobody cares, because your party's completely worthless. It does absolutely zero. It, if, if they munched crayons, they'd be more fun, frankly. So, I'd watch that. Yeah, I just... God, imagine that as a, as a Prime Minister's question time. Today, just, Rishi Sunak <laughs> demolishes a box of Crayola. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> anyway, but well, we'll end this off with the last thing here, being that um, the whole conversation's cancer anyway. I mean, the, it, it does kind of feel like going back to 2016 in mm, Lib Dem circles. Mm -hmm. For myself. You can see this video blew up. Five million odd views. It's Stephen Fry. Should we have a listen to Stephen Fry's 
insightful speech, which will make us all think deeply and totally won't be a real condescending waste of our lives. I've seen this already, but I'm going to annoy myself anyway and put my earpiece back in. Let's have a check, because I always like Stephen Fry, who mm-hmm. seemed like a sensible guy. Is he sensible with that script? I mean, Stephen, it's been an extraordinary period. Mm. You know, COVID, Brexit, all of those things. Brexit, Brexit, we must mention Brexit. The Labour Party is afraid to mention it. It was a catastrophe and everybody knows it deep in their bones. Well, and not everybody un- would yes, agree with do. you. <laughs> they know it, of course they do. And certainly the rest of the world does. But aside from that, yes, it's, it's funny because it's a clown car crash and you can't help being amused by it. But unfortunately, during that time, so much... So much was taken out of what should be the run of politics. Extraordinary that you can have a conversation with an economics minister in Labour who didn't even mention the climate catastrophe coming, that there's a tsunami coming towards us, which is partly the technology and AI and what's going to happen to work for everybody in this country, almost everybody. And there is the climate crisis. And yet everyone's talking about sort of just doing the same thing, only better. It's catastrophic. I just, no. I'm so bored. Same talking points: the climate catastrophe and Brexit. Just mm-hmm. things that don't impact my life. One whatsoever. thing really annoys me as well because I don't agree with how the Conservatives, you know, implemented Brexit. But no one ever makes that delineation of how the Conservatives actually did it and what could have been possible. Yeah, like, sure, but I mean, you always get ended up with uh, reality. But even then, the reality of Brexit. The only way it's impacted my life is I now don't have to worry about the EU bureaucrats, mm-hmm. which is good. So, but I'm sorry. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, if you if you literally explained it in like the trades terms, like they always talk about the economy, blah 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 blah. blah. Just like, like anything- is it is it better to be able to negotiate yourself with an individual country or have lots of countries group up and impose rules on you? But that's the thing. Like we've moved from a state in which we felt completely paralyzed and no one, we couldn't really blame anyone because we're run by these unelected bureaucrats who literally could overrule our government at any point. And the MPs were right to turn to us when we asked them questions and say. I literally can't do anything about it. Now, we know exactly who to blame. Mm -hmm. The Conservative Party, who are in charge and have been in charge for years. They could do anything they want right now. And any problems you have with the government in terms of regulation or them screwing you over, yeah, it is them. And you can actually blame them and remove them. And then the new people could make everything better. It's it's entirely within our own power now. I, I, I don't see how this is worse. Like, if any of the cock ups, like, if there are more cock ups now than there are before, at least now we are actually free to fix them. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, you literally couldn't fix any of the cock-ups. You just had to live with it. Absolutely. So, and whatever. And then he just goes on to talk about the climate catastrophe, and I'm so, I'm so bored. I'm yep. not interested. Mm-hmm. I, I just I could not think of something I care less about when everyone's getting, what, a, a, what 28% inflation now since 2020? The mass immigration pushing the rent up 40% in the same time period? You know how the Russians w- were saying that, you know, people in the West were starting to eat each other, their economies were so bad. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm starting to feel like that was just a, a prediction about five years out of, out, out of time rather than anything else, because it's going to get to that point. But we're already like the, this, what is it, the second lowest energy using country in Europe mm-hmm. compared to Italy. That's the only one worse than us. And that's probably because they still don't have electricity in some parts. This is just poverty, frankly. <laughs> like it's always plays as like, oh, but we're so green. It's like not no, laughing at Italy. We're, we're literally just poor in this regard. Mm-hmm. Like, every house in this, every building in this country should have air conditioning. I'm so sick of it not having air conditioning. Whole other thing. But then there's the the other aspects, which is just like, oh, but aren't aren't you you know pleased that we're doing so much for the climate? And it's like we already produce way less emissions than our economy should. We make up 1% of the global economy and like half a percent of the emissions. Also, there's... So, well, okay, well, then of, we've won. We've literally won. Sit back, actually burn some coal and make some money for once. There are also lots of flaws in how they calculate how much carbon is produced in the first place. I mean, if you buy the premises that it's based on in the first place. So, for example, um, they always talk about cows, don't they? Um, there's about a comparable sure. amount of, of um, large land animals as there were before humans even settled the British Isles. But this isn't my point. My point is just like, on these issues, you've already won. And on the issue of Brexit, like just assessing the situation, like it's way better to be free, mm-hmm. even if you're poorer, because then you can fix that yourself. You know, such as, I don't know, maybe expanding the economy instead of shrinking it every year for the sun god. Mm-hmm. Because literally, who cares? We make up half percent of the world's emissions. There's nothing compared to our economy. So we should, quite frankly, be more liberal with it and get back in line with the one percent. But that's the thing with Lib Dem types, is they're just obsessed forever with pointless nonsense, which doesn't improve our lives and, do, and, and spend their money trying to ruin it, frankly. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sick of it. Anyway, that's Inspector North, the EU nonce edition. (laughs) If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the symposium episodes, this one on value pluralism. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.